The prisoners in the prison were lining up to get water. Belik tried to cut in line, and Michael, feeling sorry for him, silently allowed it. But others couldn't stand seeing an inferior person drink water. Someone immediately kicked Belik out, and he didn't get a sip of water. The prison was in a state of water shortage. A riot a year ago angered the government, leading to the water being cut off. Water had to be delivered in buckets from outside. In the eyes of others, Belik drinking water was seen as a waste of resources. Gallego approached Michael with questions, but Michael was only interested in knowing where Whistler was. Gallego said that everyone in the prison was looking for him. Whistler got into a fight at a bar and killed the mayor's son. But it seemed like he had vanished into thin air. Some even believed that he had escaped from the prison. When Sammy demanded protection money, it caused discontent. Sammy couldn't believe that someone dared to resist and pushed the person down, causing the water bucket to spill. This was trouble. With one person in the prison pointing at this little bit of water, now no one could drink it. The prisoners who didn't get water got angry, and Lechero had to promise that more water would be brought. After watching this farce, Michael unfolded the note that Belik had given him. He stood next to Belik and asked why he had passed him the note yesterday. Belik said he was too thirsty to remember, so Michael gave him a little water. He said there was a man in the sewer who made him do it with rat meat. Michael asked for the specific location. Belik stretched out his cup, indicating that there was water and information. Michael got the location and went straight to find Whistler. On the way, he discovered that the pipeline was damp, indicating the presence of water, which caused condensation due to the temperature difference between the inside and outside. He started calling out, I'm here to rescue you. You should know that someone is coming to save you. However, there was no response from the other side of the wall. Michael gave him one last chance and said, if you don't speak now, I'm leaving. Whistler spoke up and asked, how do you plan to get me out? Everyone else wants to kill me. Michael told him to wait there and said, when the time is right, I will come for you. Whistler seemed distrustful and asked, why are those people looking for me to get out? However, Michael only knew that he was trying to save him and didn't know the exact reason. The prisoner causing trouble outside demanded that Lechero show himself. Belik believed that since Michael was being so cautious, the person behind the wall must have a secret. Gallego told Mahone about Whistler's situation. The mayor told Lechero that whoever kills Whistler in the prison will be granted amnesty. Mahone instructed Gallego not to mention that he had inquired about this to Michael. Gallego said, aren't you friends with him? Mahone replied, we are friends now. On the other side, Lincoln and Susan met in a restaurant. Susan said, Michael agreed. Just listen to my orders. But Lincoln wanted a photo of his son and Sarah to make sure they were safe. He asked why they chose him and Michael to solve this. Susan agreed to provide the photos. She explained that the attention on Whistler's crimes was too high, and the company couldn't bribe him out. They had to rely on Michael. Lincoln understood and warned her not to harm LJ and Sarah. Lincoln found Michael, who said he already found someone. He handed a note to Lincoln and asked him to check what the words on the note meant. He told Lincoln to inform those people that he would get Whistler out even if it cost him his life. Meanwhile, Mahone also found Whistler. Whistler coughed, revealing his location. Mahone quickly identified the spot and started prying open the wall. Whistler was in danger. Sucre shows up at a store with a vengeful look on his face. The shopkeeper sold him a pistol and bullets. Sucre met Belik, who thought Sucre was there to rescue him. Belik pleaded, save me. Otherwise, I won't say a word about Mary Cruz. Sucre pulled out his gun and threatened to shoot if Belik didn't talk. Belik had no choice but to tell the truth. He said that when he arrived, he did not see Mary Cruz but only the necklace left behind. Mary Cruz is alive and well. Upon hearing that Mary Cruz was still alive Sucre put away his gun and left. Sucre and Lincoln meet outside the prison, and Lincoln asks Sucre for help, saying that Michael is locked up. Sucre's mind is filled with thoughts of Mary Cruz. He says that Mary Cruz has returned to Chicago, and he wants to find her. Lincoln tells him that he is still wanted in Chicago. Sucre doesn't care and is determined to see Mary Cruz. Lincoln could only give him the hotel address and tell him to come find him if he changes his mind. Sucre feels that this is unlikely to happen. Lincoln tells him that if he truly loves Mary Cruz, he should stay away from her. Nevertheless, Sucre gets on the bus. As Lincoln watches the bus drive away, he notices that the advertisement on the back of the bus matches the message on the note. At the same time, Sophia also received the note and she immediately went to the bank. Sophia acted very nervous while taking things. He immediately began following her as she put her items in her bag and left the bank. He snatches her bag, only to find a book about birds inside. Lincoln asks what it's for, and Sophia says she doesn't know, but Whistler is a fisherman. 
Lincoln asks her to tell the fisherman that the book is in the hands of Michael's brother. Sophia becomes angry and asks why they can't spare them. Lincoln loses his temper and says it's not by choice. Meanwhile, the company's people are monitoring them from a distance. As Lincoln returns to the hotel, Susan puts a gun to his head and demands he hand over his stuff. After hesitating for a moment, Lincoln takes out the notebook. Once Susan leaves, he takes out the real notebook and starts studying it. On the other side, Sucre looked at the mother and daughter beside him and happily mentioned that his girlfriend was also pregnant. He notices a patrolling police officer and tries to avoid their gaze. The woman, seeing his reaction, immediately distances herself from him. Sucre sits on a chair and suddenly decides not to get on the bus. He goes to a telephone booth and calls Mary Cruz. Mary Cruz advises him to be careful when he returns. Sucre realizes that his situation would only put Mary Cruz and the baby in danger. He says he will resolve everything before going to find her, and Mary Cruz hopes to turn back time. He places Mary Cruz's chain on the phone and walks away. Lechero listens to the commotion below and looks angrily at Sammy. Lechero hands Teabag a small bucket of water and asks him to distribute some to the people below. Teabag was about to deliver water, but was stopped by Bellic. He didn't want to talk nonsense to Bellic, but Bellic claimed to have very important information for Lechero. Teabag comes back with Bellic, but Sammy is furious when he sees Bellic. Teabag said Bellic had information about Whistler. Bellic decided to expose the person hidden in the sewer. He just wanted to get some supplies. After Lechero heard it, he asked if the person was Australian, and upon receiving a positive answer, he smiled inwardly. Michael noticed that Lechero's men were heading towards the sewer. Seeing Bellic suddenly having food, he realized that the information had been betrayed. Michael hurried to the sewer. Mahone has caught the man and Lechero's men are watching him. Michael tried to calm Mahone down and reached out to indicate that he could help. Mahone said, weren't you the one who told me to find my own way out? You are my way out. However, Whistler took the opportunity to escape, and Mahone and Lechero's men chased after him. Michael decided to make a deal with Lechero, but Lechero didn't trust him from the beginning. Lechero told Michael that he wasn't interested in Whistler. I just want to maintain my position. I have five murder cases on my record. I don't expect to get out, but I won't stop others from trying. Michael said, I can help you solidify your position, but one wrong move can ruin everything. Lechero became annoyed and told him to leave. Michael, who was kicked out, went to find Gallego and asked him to get some alcohol. Gallego brought him the alcohol, and Michael was preparing something while asking him to bring a plastic bag. Michael poured the alcohol into the plastic bag. Gallego became anxious and said, you know I'm friends with everyone. Michael understood that Gallego was afraid of being implicated and assured him that he wouldn't reveal anything about the help he provided. Whistler was exhausted and Mahone caught up with him. Mahone held him while facing Lechero's men, and Michael went through a door along the pipeline. With more and more rebellious prisoners, Sammy couldn't sit still and wanted to assert his dominance by killing someone. Lechero realized that violence wouldn't work, so he asked the guards to bring more water barrels. The guard said that the water would arrive the day after tomorrow, which angered Lechero. He demanded it now. The guard wasn't accustomed to his temper, I said the day after tomorrow, and if you keep yelling, you won't see any water for two weeks. Michael found the main pipe and threw the alcohol inside, then placed the cloth down and lit it with a match. Mahone dragged Whistler out, and Lechero prepared to make an announcement. The rebellious prisoners said, you can't decide anything now, and Lechero was at a loss. Michael's cloth had burned to the plastic bag, and suddenly there was a loud bang and the ground shook. Just when everyone was confused, water suddenly sprayed out. Michael knew that it wasn't a lack of water, but that the government had blocked it. By using the explosion, the obstacles were blasted away, and water was restored. Lechero looked at the crowd rushing towards the water pipe and laughed. As he looked at the breathless Michael, he knew that it was actually Michael's accomplishment. Mahone asked Lechero what to do next, but didn't get an answer. Michael helped Lechero maintain his position as the leader, so naturally, he would give Whistler to Michael. Michael asked, Whistler is innocent, right? Lechero replied, he's innocent. In any case, Whistler's life was saved. Although Michael had no clue how to escape, he could relax for now. Lechero had his men bring the rebellious prisoners to him and finally gave them the water they had been wanting. Please subscribe to my channel. Share different movies and videos every day.